Hello there. Welcome, welcome, one and all again. We are so happy to be with you one more time on our program, Bible Beyond the Basics. I'm your host, Dr. Clinton Baldwin, and this is Bible Beyond the Basics coming to you from Pan-African Radio, 96.1, Lisaka, Zambia, to all our brothers and sisters and folks in Zambia and across Africa as well. We just want to thank you for tuning in another time to Bible Beyond the Basics, your favorite radio program, your favorite religious program, in which we go beyond the basics of God's words to unfold gems and beauties of the Bible. I am so pleased to be with you one more time, and with me, of course, is my host, my co-host, rather, Dr. Uh, Pastor Moses Mark. Hey, Pastor, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm here, Doc. I'm always glad to be here. God is good, and I'm so excited for what the Lord is doing through Bible Beyond the Basics. Yes, yes, and uh, we know it has been reverberating across the nations, and the people are, the reaction is very good so far. And we look forward to hearing from you. So please, let us hear from you. Give us a call. 970-633-578. That's 970-633-578. Or visit us online at dikayoma.com. D-I-K-A-I-O-M-A dot com. That's our sponsoring organization. And uh, by the way, the word dikayoma is a Greek word, which means righteousness, justice, mercy, truth, love, etc. Okay, so Pastor, what's on the menu for today? Yes, we want to take a look at salvation today, the whole matter of salvation. Okay. Very important. Yeah. Very, very important. Very, very important. Uh, well, let's get into it then. Let's get into it before long. Uh, before we start, however, we always love to pray. It's important we ask God's guidance on his word. And as we pray as well, Pastor, I'm going to ask you to pray. We just want to pray for people across Zambia, our listeners. Pray that God will bless them in their finances. Pray that God will bless them in their relationships. Pray that God will give them, you know, salvation from the problems and the heartaches that they are having. So let's pray for the direction of the program and also for all our listeners out there. At this moment, we like to pray for you. And Pastor Moses is going to do the prayer just now. Let's pray. Father, we give you thanks, O God, for this another time where we can broadcast Bible Beyond the Basics. And Lord, at this time, we just put the program into your hands. We pray specifically for our listeners in Zambia, that Lord, as the message reaches their hearts, that they will truly be blessed. We pray for your continued guidance and protection over them, that you, O oh God, will deliver them from their various problems, that you will just bless them holistically in every aspect of their lives, and that, Lord, you will just cause them to prosper because that is your wish and your desire for your people and so mm -hmm. lord i just leave the entire thing into your hands even now lead and direct as we give you thanks in the mighty name of jesus amen 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 okay so but before we get into this week's study on salvation with the subject of salvation Let's just do a short review of what we have been doing, studying so far. We have been talking about the methods of Bible study, yes. right? And the word for, or method of interpretation. And we use the word hermeneutics a few times. And hermeneutics has to do with interpretation. Yeah. Every time you read something or even listening to me right now, uh, you are interpreting what I'm saying. Is not right. Yes. You're making sense of what I'm saying. And we are saying 
is that when interpretation is applied to scripture, it is called exegesis. Huh? And that is a, a, a word that means to lead out of, to read out of the text, to take into consideration various contexts, contexts, plural, huh? Because, as we discovered over and over, the Bible was written to particular audiences back there in Bible times, the New Testament 2,000 years ago, the Old Testament more than 2,000 years ago. Huh? And the Bible was written to specific people, and they had particular, you know, situations in which they existed. They had many contexts, plural, huh? Yeah. in which we ought to interpret the Bible. Uh, just rehearse again for us, Pastor, just list again for us the different contexts which must be considered when one is reading or one is studying Bible. Yes, definitely. So we have a few that we looked at. We have the textual context, which has mm -hmm. to do with uh, the actual, the literal thing that the Bible writer wrote. Yes. What he literally wrote on paper. So that's the yes. textual context. You have the literary context, which mm -hmm. has to do with words, how the words were used, phrases, how the words were constructed, uh, the meaning of those words. Yes. Yeah. So that's the literary context. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the historical uh, and cultural context, which has to do with what was happening back then and mm -hmm. how it influenced the text. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, also has to do, take into consideration uh, who wrote it, to whom it was written, all of those. Um, when it was written. When it was written. Uh, you have the theological context which has to do with the belief system back then, the belief system of the Bible writer and how his belief about God and the world influenced how he wrote the text. Exactly. Wow. Beautiful. So Bible study then has to, uh, is some work. Huh? Yes. It is some work. What it means, therefore, listening to you, is, is that context is not simply reading the verses above the one in consideration and those afterwards. Huh? Yeah. That's just one dimension of context. Yeah. But if context, as you mentioned, has to do with looking at the culture, uh -huh. looking at the language, then it means that in addition to your Bible, you may need some other tools, wouldn't you say? Definitely, definitely. And, what are the tools? And, and that's one of the things that we spoke about, that mm -hmm. we need other tools, other resources, uh, okay. such as a Bible dictionary mm -hmm. or a lexicon. Mm -hmm. uh, we gave some in our last program. You recommended some very valuable books and tools that could be used. Yes, uh, we also spoke about some study Bibles that mm -hmm. could be used. Uh, so we implore our listening friends to go back to the past program just to get the names of those tools, which will be so valuable as you seek to study the Bible. Yes, and visit just about any reputable bookstore religious bookstore and ask for books having to do with the background of the Bible, Bible dictionary, et cetera. And we also mentioned that you may need to use more than one versions of the Bible. Yes. Most Christians are accustomed to the King James version, but that's just one version of the Bible. And there are others which are written in modern languages that can be used and also online. If one should just Google Bible versions online, et cetera, through, you know, different software programs, there are so many versions out there that one can use and compare because that is very, very important. So, wow, all of that then has to do with context and, and, and it has to do with uh, what we love to say, what the text meant must first be understood 
before what it means can adequately be appreciated. Huh? So very, very important. What it meant in the past must first be understood before what it means in the present because words, phrases, a lot, et cetera, changes meaning over time. And we are thousands of years removed from the time of the Bible. Important principle. With those principles in mind, let's plunge forward then and talk about salvation today. So pastor, when you say salvation, what do you have in mind? What are you talking about? Well, for the most part, when we think of the word salvation, we normally mm -hmm. think of uh, we normally think of Jesus. We normally think of uh, the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross. You know right. how we can be delivered and rescued mm -hmm. from sin and its penalty by mm -hmm. believing in Jesus. Okay. So when we think of salvation, that's what normally comes to our minds. Yes. So, what's the problem with that? No, definitely. When we look at, especially the New Testament, mm -hmm. we see the New Testament speaking of salvation along those lines. So, definitely, that is salvation. But when we look at the basic meaning of salvation, it has right. to do with rescue deliverance right so okay so we realize then that being rescued being delivered from sin is just one of the rescuing one of the deliverance that god does you know and i would say the most important you know wow but wow god does rescue and deliver his people in other ways exactly Definitely. And so salvation is not just limited to uh, being saved from sin. Wow. Going to heaven. You know, mm. <laughs> you know again, yes. we, are, or, or we, we are bringing into practice what we've been talking about, context. Yes. Because the Bible uses the word salvation in so many places, and you are saying that the word has different connotations yes. in different contexts, different settings. Definitely. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, it has to do with deliverance. Yes. And the cross deliverance is just one of the deliverances, one of the salvation realities of scripture. Yes. Can you give us another one or, or others? Well, when we look at Israel, for example, mm -hmm. we see that Israel experienced salvation mm -hmm. and their salvation was from Egyptian bondage. They were slaves in Egypt and God mm -hmm. sent Moses down to Egypt and through Moses, he saved his people. From Egyptian bondage. Exactly, exactly. And the word salvation is used to describe the deliverance from Egypt, huh? Definitely, definitely. Exodus, I think you have a text for that, Exodus 13. Yes, Exodus chapter 14, rather. 14, verse 13. Verse 13. I'll read it. So Exodus mm -hmm. 14, verse 13. And Moses yes. said to the people, and Moses said to the people, do not be afraid, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will mm -hmm. accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. Wow. Uh, Very important. Beautiful, beautiful. So salvation then has to do with the, in the Old Testament, with the deliverance from Egyptian slavery. Yes. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Is there any other connotation? Uh, when we look at the Psalms, for example, mm -hmm. we see where 
the psalmist, David and the psalmist in general, uses the word salvation, but within that context, it speaks to deliverance from his enemies. For example, yes. in Psalm 18, mm -hmm. just read that, Psalm 18, verse 2 and 3. Mm -hmm. It says, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, mm -hmm. my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Wow. <laughs> so, you know... So, so, so deliverance then from enemies yes. equals salvation. Yes. Huh? And, and we have to point out here, Dr. Ball, mm -hmm. and when the psalmist said that he will be saved from his enemies, mm -hmm. he wasn't talking about Satan and the demonic forces. Right. <laughs> he was talking about evil people who wanted to do him harm. Yes, flesh and blood people. Yes, like yes. himself. So what we are uncovering even just now, if I will leap forward to application, is that when we speak of salvation, we should not just think about going to heaven hmm? yeah. or deliverance from sin, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But salvation has to do with hardcore, everyday bread and butter issues. Yeah, the, the children of Israel were in slavery in Egypt, and God delivered them from slavery. That slavery <laughs> represents economic oppression, it represents social oppression, it represents physical oppression, it represents deprivation, and God delivered them from that, and the deliverance is called salvation. So in my everyday life, when I get some financial blessings as salvation, uh, when I am delivered from sickness, when I'm delivered from all the vicissitudes and the hardships around me, that is God's salvation in my life. Very important, you know, because many times in the religious realm, in church settings, sometimes we tend to just spiritualize the whole business of religion of salvation. But here we see that salvation has a very practical dimension to it. Huh? Wouldn't you say? Amen. Definitely. Definitely. And so... We, we, we give God thanks that God is a holistic God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. He cares about my life today. Yes. And what is happening in my practical life this moment. Okay. So that is salvation then, particularly in, in to the Old Testament and also the New Testament to do with deliverance deliverance uh salvation other terms are also used for you know salvation and uh, particularly in the new testament in in the pauline epistles there is a word justification yes or may i say dikayoma <laughs> mm. Amen. Our sponsoring organization. Yes. The word dikayoma is part of, it, it, it is in a family of word. Dikaios, the adjective meaning just. Dikayosune, the noun meaning righteous. The verb dikayo, the verb meaning to justify and all of those words connotes the idea of salvation god seeing us as worthy as 
okay as being justified. Huh? And all of those are salvation metaphors. Let's talk about salvation within the context of justification. Hmm? Very important. So well, when I think of um, justification, Doc, there's mm. a very common text that I love, a text that I love, Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Okay. That's a text that comes to mind when we normally think of justification. Let me just read it. So Romans chapter 5, verse 1, it states, Therefore, having mm. been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord, Jesus Christ. By the way, who wrote that text? Romans 5, verse 1. That text was written Romans by 5. the Apostle Paul. Ooh, when? Around somewhere there in the... 54, 54. AD 54. Yeah. Uh -huh, in the first century, AD 54. Yeah. And it was written to whom? It was written to the church in Rome. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Very, very important. You see... We are just practicing, uh, you know, the principles that we lay out. Yeah. So as we discuss the Bible, we want you as our listeners also to learn the principles of interpretation. Yeah. So here we read the text, Romans 5 verse 1. We ask ourselves, who wrote it? In this case, Paul. To whom was it written? The churches the church in rome at the time when around ad 54 that is about 54 years after jesus and this was written to a church of jewish christians and gentile christians uh, and is a situation in which paul was encouraging the christians in rome pertaining to the basis of their justification their salvation how it happened. And if we may read the text again, Pastor, he's saying, Therefore, having been justified mm -hmm. by faith, we have Good. peace with God. Good. If you don't mind elaborating on this for us. Right. So he's showing that we are justified. First, he was speaking to his primary audience, right? And he was saying that they have been justified and they have been justified, the, 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 the means through which they receive this justification is faith, right? Because he had been establishing that in the previous chapters. And so he concludes now and say, therefore, having been justified by faith. He's giving you now some of the results of this justification, this salvation. We have peace with God. And all of this justification has to do with Jesus Christ. It was based on what Jesus accomplished for us at Calvary. And... Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful. At this point, we are going to take a short break and we'll be right back because we are just now developing this concept of justification slash salvation. And uh, we are finding it very interesting. Pastor Moses is saying that we are justified by faith based on the merits of Jesus Christ. In other words, we are saved by faith based on the merits of Christ. That may sound simple, but at the same time, the implications and the practical, you know, fleshing out is tremendous and powerful. So we're just going to ask you to hold for a short break and we'll come right back and discuss this some more. Please call your friends and let them know that Bible Beyond the Basics is on. We now take a short break.
Welcome back to Bible Beyond the Basics. I'm your host, Dr. Clinton Baldwin, with my friend and brother, Pastor Moses Marsh. And uh, we are bringing you Bible Beyond the Basics on Pan-African Radio. Remember to communicate with us. You can give us a call at 970-633-578. And one more time, 970-633-578. We love to hear from you. We're discussing the topic of salvation under the heading of justification. And before the break, we read Romans chapter five, verse one, and we were making the point that Paul here writes that we are justified, we are saved, we are seen as okay. We have a righteous status before God, by faith. Is that all that Paul has to say on the subject? Or is there anything more in Romans, just in this very book, that we can learn from the subject, Pastor? And there is so much more in this book. So much more, so much more. Uh, for example, as he continues, he continues to develop and to speak about the, the basis of this justification. And in verse nine of the same Romans chapter five, yes, he says much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. So he makes the point that we have been justified by Jesus's blood. Right. So he continues to anchor the basis of our justification, not on anything that we have done, not on anything coming from us, but the basis of our justification, of our salvation is what God has done outside of us in Jesus. The blood of Christ. Blood of Christ. Wow, wow, that's very powerful. Uh, I'm glad you hit that tune because within the context, there were persons, particularly Jewish Christians, who were saying that justification, salvation was accomplished through law keeping. As a matter of fact, in chapter 3, verse 21, Paul writes, but now apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been manifested, been witnessed by the law and the prophets, verse 22, chapter 3. Even the righteousness or the justification of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe, for there is no distinction. Yeah. Hmm? But now apart from law, the righteousness of God has been manifested. By the way, the word there for righteousness, the hmm? is the same word for justice or justification. In English, we have two separate words, righteousness, justification. In Greek, it's one word, dikaios, dikaiosune, etc. So one word translated using two different words in English. So when we read the righteousness of God has been manifested, we can also, it also means the justification of God or the justice of God. And this justice of God, the righteousness of God, verse 22 of Romans 3, has been made manifested by the faith of Jesus Christ for all those who believe. So it ties in with chapter five, verse one, where the justification is by faith and it is apart from law keeping. Yes. Very, very important. It is by faith of Jesus apart from the keeping of the law. In other words, Paul is saying here, tell me if I'm right, pastor, that our law keeping, our good behavior is not the grounds for our justification, is not the grounds for our salvation, is not the grounds for our acceptance with God. 
exactly, exactly. That is exactly what mm -hmm. the Apostle Paul is saying, Dr. Baldwin. And in mm -hmm. chapter 4, yes. he alludes to someone who is held very prominent among the Jews, the same okay. Jews who were pushing that mm -hmm. justification had to do with law keeping. He, mm -hmm. he spoke of Abraham, who was the father of the nation. And exactly. in Romans chapter 4, from verse 1 through to verse 8, he mm -hmm. identifies that Abraham was not justified based on works. Then from mm -hmm. verse 9 mm -hmm. through to verse 12, he identifies mm -hmm. that Abraham was not justified based on circumcision. Right. And then from verse 13 uh, onwards, he speaks and he shows that Abraham was not justified based on law, keeping but that he was justified based on his faith. Wow. Yes. As a matter of fact, in verse 11, he is pointing out that uh, Abraham was even, what was counted as righteous was justified even before he was circumcised. Huh? Yes, yes. And then he received circumcision as a sign of the justification he received. So very, very important. So very, very important. Uh, the... the in chapter 5 also, I like chapter 5 uh, going on from verse 10. Yes. <laughs> That's Romans For 5. Mm -hmm. Romans 5 verse 10. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. While we were enemies, we were reconciled. We were brought to at one meant. We were justified, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By the death of his son, much more now having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So what he's saying here is that law keeping good works could never be the basis of our justification because while we were enemies, that is before we started to live good, before the Christians then started their proper living, so to speak, their law keeping, a justification, a reconciliation occurred. Huh? Yes. So very beautiful. In Romans chapter 10, back to chapter 10, I mean, sorry, Chapter 4, chapter 4, verse 5, the same point is echoed. To the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is credited as righteousness. Well, Doc, so, yes. Uh, I am, <laughs> I'm, I'm having a little trouble with this verse that you have just read. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. it speaks of God justifying the ungodly, mm -hmm. believes. But normally, when you think of an ungodly person, mm -hmm. ungodly person is such a wicked person who, who, who does all sort of sinfulness. You know, he, I mean, he's ungodly. You know, mm -hmm. one would think that before one is justified, before God saves someone, before mm -hmm. God declares someone righteous, mm -hmm. doesn't the person have to put away sinfulness, repent, you know, uh, mm -hmm. renounce his sinfulness and start living a good life and then God would save him and justify him. Always the Bible saying, always Paul saying that, that godly man believes and he's justified. Help wow. Me with that. Wow. This is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Let me read for you uh, chapter th three, verse 20, 21 to 23, and answer that question. 
uh, verse chapter 3, verse 20, for through the law comes the experience of sin. Because of the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. Uh, but now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Again, the point continues that justification is apart from law keeping. So we are seeing how the your ungodly man comes in right now, right? Yeah. Okay, he's coming. Okay, even the righteousness of God through the faith of Jesus. The righteousness of God through the faith of Jesus. Uh, some versions say the faith in Jesus. But again, as we talked in previous programs, in studying the Bible, you must look at the original language. And the phrase here, pistis yesu, is properly translated the faith of Jesus. The pistis yesu Christo, the construction here is saying that we are justified by the faith of Jesus, not by our faith in Jesus. And next week we will flesh this out some more. But the, the point is that before God justifies us in ourselves, Pastor. Yes. He first, as it were, justifies us in Christ. Mm -hmm. And then now he bids us to accept our justification in Christ by faith. Mm -hmm. Put it in simple terms. Jesus himself is our justification, our righteousness. You know, if, if, if we go back to the Old Testament, it reminds me of Exodus chapter 15, verse 2, again, where it speaks of salvation. It says that Yahweh, our God, is our salvation in the children of Israel. Yeah. When he yeah. brought them out of Egypt, he said, Yahweh gave them salvation. Exodus 15, verse 2, Yahweh is or was their salvation. The same thing here now, Jesus, as it were, Yahweh incarnate, is our salvation, is our justification, is our righteousness. So our righteousness before God is first and foremost something that God does outside of us in the person of Christ. Yes. And then he bids us accept our justification by faith. That's the reason why Paul says God justifies the ungodly. Mm. He justifies him not in himself, but in outside of himself, in Christ. And the implications are powerful and many and beautiful. A very, very important point that we must, you know, recognize, Pastor, is that when we speak of salvation and justification, we must first recognize that it is a reality that happens for us outside of us in the person of Christ. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why Paul could say, while we were enemies, Romans 5 verse 10, we were reconciled to God by the death of of his son. It's a very, very beautiful point. Because what it is saying is that all men, I'm going to watch this carefully now, all men stand saved in Christ, outside of themselves, in Jesus. And let me hasten to say, we are not teaching at this point universalism, which says that everybody automatically will be saved eventually. Hmm? And we're going to come back to this, so be patient with us. What we're saying is that Jesus is our salvation, our justification, our righteousness yes. before God. Hmm? What are some of the implications of that, Pastor? Give, give us some implications as you know we move towards the end of our program. Yes, some of the implications of what you have just said. There are many. Uh, yes. For example, one, if we recognize that we have been saved in Jesus, first and foremost, mm -hmm. yes, we 
recognize then that when we are thinking of accepting Christ mm -hmm. and we may have some problems, we may mm -hmm. have some sins, we may mm -hmm. have some things that need sorting out. Yes. You don't need to sit back and say, yes, I want to accept Christ, but I have to sort out X or Y, you know, Z, I have to sort out these things mm -hmm. before coming to Jesus. I can realize that I've been saved in Christ already. And so mm. I can accept Jesus up front wow. and cast all the other issues that I have and let him take care of it. You have been pre-approved. Yes. They've been pre-approved. It's like you're applying for a credit card or something or a loan or, you know, and... Uh, the, the, the notice comes. You have been approved up front. Amen. Therefore, go to the office and get that which you want. Huh? I'm reminded of the story of the prodigal. Yes. I think it's Luke 15, huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. He found himself in uh, the pigsty and he got up made a speech he would give to his father. When you read the story, he did not get the chance to deliver the speech. The father ran, hugged him, intercepted his speech, so to speak, his confession, mm -hmm. and received him and accepted him. In other words, he went home to acceptance. Yes. He was accepted already. The point is, when we recognize that Christ is our righteousness, we recognize that we are accepted by God up front. Mm. And we come to God to accept our acceptance. Wow. Not in order for him to accept us. Mm -hmm. He accepts us up front. Mm. It's a powerful, beautiful reality that we just need to think about and bask in it. It means that you cannot be bad enough for God not to accept you. Mm. Let me say that. Mm. You cannot be wicked enough to be outside of the love and the acceptance of God. Why? Because he has already accepted you in Jesus. Beautiful. It, 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 it's so beautiful. It, it, it's so beautiful. And the more we think of it and bask it, 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 it is the more we realize that it's not just a theory. It's, it's a practical reality having to do with our, you know, Christianity and so much more. And we're going to flesh this out, you know, in, in, in other programs. But I'm sure you have some other implications and possible some other, you know, texts which you want to read or share on the topic, Pastor. Yes. Um, two more implications come to mind, Doc. Uh, yes. If persons were to realize, for example, that they have already been accepted in Christ, they have been accepted yes. up front, you know, and mm -hmm. all they need to do is just to accept their acceptance. Mm -hmm. This would cause many more persons to come to Jesus because as human beings, we have done so many wrong, made so many mistakes. Some of us as mm -hmm. human beings have done very wicked, evil, gruesome acts. And yes. because of how wicked the act is, Yes. Some of us may believe that God will never accept us because of what we have done. We are too bad. Mm? Exactly. Yes. But if persons were to recognize, as you said, that we cannot be bad enough right. to not be accepted, to be mm -hmm. outside of God's love, if persons were to recognize that many more would run to Jesus. Yes. 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 Yeah. Wow. Wow. While God, Romans 4, verse 5 again, God justifies the ungodly. Mm. 5, verse 10, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God. Mm. 
mm. by the death of his son. And let me jump over to a well-known one, Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Yes. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We Many times we read that text, Romans 3, 23, without reading it in context. Let me do a quick thing on Romans 3.23, because Romans 3.23 must be read with at least verse 24. Yes. It's one straight sentence in the Greek. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The word here for fall short is the Greek word hysteritai, which means continue to fall short. All of sin and continue to fall short, continue to sin, so to speak. However, these said people who continue to fall short, verse 24 says, are being justified by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. In other words, while you are sinning and continue to fall short, Paul is saying that the people who fall short are justified. Mm. In other words, you have a justification in Christ. That's the reason why, and I close with this one, or Romans 8 verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. The salvation reality in Christ, properly understood, is very beautiful, very encouraging, very reassuring. Again, Jesus is our righteousness, and we cannot be wicked, be sinful enough for him not to accept us. Yeah. Why? Because in Christ, we are already accepted. In Christ, we stand justified. In Christ, we are seen as saved. In Christ, we are accepted, seen as okay before God. We have our salvation resident, packaged in the person of Jesus. And when God looks at Jesus, he's seen you, Pastor Moses, he's seen me. He's seen all of his billions of children throughout the world. And that's a beautiful, beautiful reality for me. Uh, what do you say on this? I say, praise the Lord. Thank Amen. God for Jesus. Amen. Amen. And we want to flesh this out some more because I know as we talk about this, there may be questions, huh? So we're going to come back to this next week and flesh it out some more. I know many people are asking about one save, always saved, and things like those. And, you know, do I need to be in church in order to be saved? The salvation is in Christ. And uh, many other questions. This, you know, not to be baptized in order to be saved. And all of those are the questions. We want to revisit them next week and the following weeks as we discuss the whole the, business of salvation in Jesus, the cross, and justification. We are virtually out of time. This has been a very, very beautiful experience today. It was a pleasure for me and Pastor Moses to have been here. And uh, a closing thought, Pastor, before we wrap up. Yes, I just want to give God thanks that I have already been accepted first and foremost in Christ. All wow, I need to do is to accept my acceptance. And that smile on your face, that smile on your face telling me you're enjoying it. Amen. <laughs> yeah. That's beautiful. The beautiful. We want all of our listeners throughout Zambia and Africa, wherever this program is, or those of you who will listen online afterwards on YouTube or Facebook. We want you to realize and to feel and to enjoy this beautiful salvation reality in Jesus Christ. I'm Dr. Clinton Baldwin with Pastor Moses Marsh saying bye-bye from Bible Beyond the Basics. Join us next week at the same time 
on Pan-African Radio 96.1 or wherever online you'll find this program. Remember to visit us at D-I-K-A-I-O-M-A, dikayoma.com or give us a call, those of you who are in uh, Zambia at 970-633-578. 970-633-578. Bye-bye for now from Barbie on the Basics. Until next week, please take care of yourselves. Thank you for following today's broadcast brought to you courtesy of Tikayoma Ministries International. You can follow us on Facebook at Dikayoma Ministries International or on YouTube at Clinton Baldwin. Make sure to like our Facebook page today so you can receive updates, ministry information, and to be able to view future broadcasts. On behalf of Senior Pastor Dr. Clinton Baldwin and the team at Dikayoma Ministries, we wish you God's blessings and look forward to having you next time.